I know that my husband would kill anyone who tried to come between us. They were hunting on motorcycles in Southampton. Is that the day Griffith proposed to you? Stop! Oh, Griffith. Screwed up the hunt again. It looks like you weren't hunting anyway. Not really, but when the fox heads in one direction and the deer in another, what's the poor hunter to do? Follow the slower? Follow the sweeter and the smarter. I think people in this town are idiots. Otherwise, they'd treat you better. I think that you should listen to everyone and steer clear of me. I can't do that. I'm the one for you. Can't you see that? No, I don't quite see that. Are you in love with Greg Neville? Would you be so cruel? Could you? Let me lay down right here. Come here. Just run right over here. I'd rather have you crush my windpipe with your bike. I'd rather have you kill me like that than to break my heart by loving someone else. You don't think you're perhaps overdoing it? No one but you doubts what I feel for you. Then let's get married. As you know, neither of us has any money. Leave me. Fly for me. Do anything but hate me. Goodbye. So this is about Greg Neville. He never shuts up about you. Is that my fault? Into fire! My head wants to burst! I might do something bloody. Something crazy. I might kill him. Or you. Or both. Ah! I can't take it anymore. Choose right now forever between that giant freak and me. You need to get a grip. I prefer you. But now I know that I will never marry. You are too jealous and suspicious. We won't be happy together. I am going to devote myself to the church. That's what you have to say to me? You know what, Kate? I'm leaving the country. You'll be sorry when I'm gone. Well, if you leave, it'll be your decision, not mine. I've spent some of the happiest moments of my life with you. Don't you see? If I loved you any less, I wouldn't have to leave. To hell with you, Neville. And you, Kate. I hope God blesses you single, curses you married. Amen.
password. Hey, Joe. Where's your bike? I left it back there. I wouldn't be leaving your bike around. Your father sold his last car, and if you're not careful, he'll be taking your bike too. Have you seen Griffith Gaunt? He took off. Didn't you hear? Mr. Carlton died. Everyone's been running around looking for Griffiths. I spent all our money. I want to make it right. I want to make sure you're taken care of. I found your good husband, Greg Neville. He's Ash Neville's son, and they're rich. They've got big estates all over the place. One day, it'll all be yours. You'll be rock and roll royalty. Never, Dad. Never. Shh, he'll hear you. Are you crazy? Be a good girl and don't tempt good luck. You'd make a terrible waitress. People laugh at you for having no cash and no prospects. Do it for me to make me happy. Ash Neville's son. He's a legend. I grew up on his music. I wanted to be him. So do it for me to make me happy. Don't be a brat and humiliate me. I'm not proud to admit it, but he's lending me $50,000. Dad, how could You were born like the sun to bless all those you shine upon. My lady, I will love you like these Long Island hicks could never be taught to love. I lay my heart, my name, my being at your feet. He will not be loved, you shall be worshipped. Oh, turn those eyes full of soul on me so that one day no matter how remote. Rival of the angels, darling of my heart, will you be Greg Neville's wife? You don't have to marry me if you don't love me. I'm not in love with anyone. My cousin Carlton died today. And that's not all. I got into a fight with someone who used to be my friend, and he's supposed to be Carlton's heir. I really think that he should know, don't you? Oh. I'm sorry, I didn't realize. He left suddenly, and he... I have this sealed letter, and I have no way to get it to him.
I'm afraid you're going to have to postpone your journey for a day or two. I have some bad news to tell you. Carlton is dead. Everyone's been looking for you. You must go to Bolton House at once. So he's left me too. Any other day, your news would make me cry. You... When I saw you pull up, I thought you... I thought you came after... I hoped... I... Why should I go to Bolton House? You should be ashamed of yourself. You're gonna turn your back on him as you inherit his estate? How little you think of me. What is Bolton House to me now? I just wanted to give it to you. It's supposed to be yours anyways. It will be yours. I came between you and your cousin, and I robbed you. But he used to say, what does it matter who I leave it to? You're both going to share it. That's all changed now. Anyways, when I get where I'm going, I'll send a letter to the lawyer, have everything signed over to your name. And when you live in Bolton, with somebody you love as much as I love you, you can think, oh, poor jealous Griffith. You're going to make me hate you. God forbid. Aren't you being a little melodramatic? Take your scooter and go home. I have had a terrible day. Can't you be sympathetic? You give in just this once? Fine. Say no more. I give in. I always end up doing what you want. So tell me, how'd you come to be driving Greg Neville's Jeep? I don't have a car. I had to catch up with you. What was I supposed to do? Catherine's bike that I saw Greg Neville on? He gave you the Jeep. And he's buying her a ring. He's planning on marrying her. That's a lie. I don't think so. My sources are reliable. And... Who told you this? It's the word on the street. Don't be an asshole. You know what she means to me. What you're saying is an insult to her and to me. Now you're going to tell me who told you this. I'm going to beat you down like a little bitch. Oh yeah, let's go. Okay. Okay, okay, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you who it was. It was Neville. Neville thought so. He's a liar and a jerk. I wouldn't tell him that. He dueled someone in Europe and they did his door now. Yeah, where's Greg now? How would I know? Come here. So he tells me that's Catherine's bike you're riding. Oh, you little tattletale. And he tells me that you and Catherine are engaged? Worse and worse. I'll never trust you with any of my secrets again. And besides, you exaggerated. I see right through you. This guy is just your tool. And that's why I brought him here to witness what I have to say to you. Greg Neville, you're a liar and an asshole. I could kill you for those two words. I call you out. Just in the time and the place. Dalton, will you excuse us? I need to talk to Neville privately. Stop. No violence. Think about this. We're not going to brawl. We're going to settle this old school. Dalton, if you breathe a word of this, and you, you don't care about her reputation at all, the least you could do is avoid more scandal. I'll keep Dalton quiet. We only need to bring one discreet friend each who will follow us to the field. Tell no one else. That way, no locals or cops will find out. I've heard such things are common out here. Fine. Friday, 9 a.m. Playing field behind the school. 
I see no problem with that. Keep your arm close to your side. Aim high. How do you feel? I'm gonna die. Try not to die long. Ready? Yes. Ready? Ready. One, two, three, fire! One, two, three, five. That's it, I'm, I'm stopping the door. It's nothing. It just slowed my left hand. He shot me. He had gunned the works and I'll shoot him. It's like war. If you shoot, so can he. That's the shit out here. It is. Probably case on our side. That's the side. I'm happy to let this happen. This is different than the woman. I demand my second shot at his third. If he doesn't agree, he's a coward in addition to the things I've said. All right, this is the last shot under any circumstances. One. Stop! Two. <gasps> I really have to apologize. How could you do this? I'm here to clear up a misunderstanding between two guys who are both my friends. 
Do you remember that day that we were out hunting? Griffith and I got into an argument, so Griffith decided to leave the country. When I got home, I learned that my cousin, his uncle, Carlton Payne, had died. Just then, Neville was at my house. What was I supposed to do? So, Neville lent me his Jeep. He never told me that he lent you his Jeep to help me. I didn't? Well, I do now. It took me longer to find Griffith than I had expected, so Neville took my bike home. That's where the misunderstanding started. You are the only person to have a problem with Neville. Are you really wiser than everyone? Won't you take back what you said? Well, perhaps I was a bit harsher than I, I should have been. That's all right. I don't feel I was completely blameless in this matter either. I'm just going to get my bike and go. So do you think I should still come to the funeral? Yeah, I think Catherine would like that. Hello, Catherine. I'm here for our appointment. I have committed many sins. I am guilty of pride, envy, wrath, immodesty, vanity, luxury. Not so fast, my daughter. You're being too general. Start with wrath. We're all prone to that. Well, I was getting my hair trimmed. And there's that girl, Ellen. She yanked on my hair. So I said, why don't you go get that guy that you're obsessing with to come comb my hair? I stood up and stormed out. Did you push her? No, Father. Not as bad as that. Are you certain? My heart pushed her. Hmm. Proceed to pride. I must confess that I've become very egotistical from the praise of men. Huh, men. What do you do with men? Nothing, really. Come on, daughter. Half confession is no confession at all. I could do fine without men. What I really want is chocolate, good food, expensive clothes. I'd like a car of my own. I'd like to get out of this town. Father? Father? Father! <clears throat> uh, um, my daughter, you will fast next Monday and say two aves. Now, as I am a practical man, let us end the confession. Let us leave the imaginary in favor of the real. Imaginary? My sins are not imaginary. Just sit down. I would like to talk with you. Now, I'm going to call things by their right name. You are in a difficult situation right now, and I think that you are going to have to make a decision about Neville and Griffith. Are you still talking about those two guys? I want to get away from both of them, and I want to give myself to peace and charity. Zeal is nothing without obedience. If you could serve the church better than by going into the convent, would you be stubborn? No, Father, but how could I serve the church better than by forsaking the world and by becoming a nun? Perhaps by staying in the world, as the church does. You could not serve the church worse than by going into a convent. We want no more poor nuns. The church doesn't want me because I'm poor? If you are, as I think, a true daughter of the church, you will marry and instill the true church in your children. Then your heir will be Catholic, and the true faith gets better rooted. Are we supposed to live for nothing? But the worldly interests of the church? 
they are not separable from her spiritual interests. Are our souls not bound to our bodies? It's all the same. The church rejects me. No, no, no. Only the convent rejects you. You're emotional with idealistic notions. You would be mortified in a nunnery. You think a convent can shut out temptation? You're being really harsh, Father. I mean every word I say. Are you going to listen to the church through me, its minister? Are you going to obey her and be a good girl? Or are you going to go your own way, hiding pride and a willful heart under a mask of humility? I know better than to disobey my spiritual father. Now, there's my girl. Ready? Too bad. Great sent his limo. See you downstairs. Are you sure you'd rather be a nun than marry me? Did I say that? My moods change so fast. Well, I obsess over everything you say. In a few moments, I suppose I'll own this dump. And anything you want, I will strive to give it to you. Just please, please don't marry anyone but me. You know me so well by now. You know the worst of me. You only know the outside of him. Am I here to listen to insults? No, not at all. I mean, a convent. You can build a convent or a charitable trust. You can do good without breaking my poor heart. Money can buy anything. And after tonight, I'm certainly going to have enough. So, well, I was thinking of building a racetrack, so I don't think we're going to have enough to do both, so forget the ponies. Let's help out the church. Who put it into your head to bribe me in this disgusting way? My heart. I, Carlton Payne, being of sound mind and body, make my last will and testament as follows. To the people who attend the funeral, one hundred dollars each. To my wife's cousin, Griffith Gaunt, I bestow... $10,000. All my real estate, buildings, farms, lands, mortgages, vehicles, and all other worldly goods I give to Catherine Payton of Southampton, New York, USA, her heirs, executors, administrators, and assignees forever. Never was luck so fair. I don't know. I think I was happier a minute ago. Hello, Miss Catherine. I simply must show you the house. Just show me one bedroom with a bath. My room is tiny, but it's warm. Obviously, you don't wait for a man to tell you to take care of yourself. Stay out of my way. Anyone who gets near me right now is going to get it.
What on earth ever gave you the idea you were going to get that line? Carlton said so. Did he? Not that he wanted to deny Catherine. He thought we were going to be together. Oh well, I guess that's over. Surely you agree. Come on, you don't want to mooch. She can add Carlton's money to Neville's. You've been like a son to me. I have nothing against you. It's just too bad. Don't be so moody. I'm her father. Tell me you understand the situation. God! What did I ever do to you? I'd like to know. How much am I supposed to take? An hour ago, I found out I have to move out of here. And now you want to tell me that I've lost her for that? You need to tell me this? She was out of my league when I thought I was going to get this estate. What I don't get is why you feel the need to shove it in my face. Can you just give me a minute to catch my breath? And you do this when you realize that I got to smile and play host and everything. I'm supposed to do all this while my heart is breaking. Fine, whatever you want. She could tell me to get lost. I'm not going to chase after your multimillionaire daughter. I'm going to get lost. My arm hurts, my head aches, my heart is sick to death. Man, try not to torture me more than anyone could possibly take. You really have a problem. You really should talk to someone. Yeah, I'm insane. Now, if you can only just give me a break, I can keep my head up and act like a man for just a little while. You know, I wish I was lying there where I buried my friend this afternoon. Oh, well, I don't want to talk to you. And I don't want you to talk to my daughter anymore. Is that clear? <laughs> If your daughter talks to me, I'll talk to her without your permission. Don't worry, I won't go chasing after your rich daughter. Excuse me, Miss Peyton. Dinner is ready. Thanks. I'm not going home today. You're in charge here. We're going to stay. Hey, what are you doing? Our host is cheerful getting drunk. You should go somewhere else. Why is no one stopping him? Do you kick your friends when they're down? Catherine, you're upset because you're generous and noble. You're even more miserable because Griffith's loss is your gain. You don't want him enough to get married. Since you can't make him happy, it hurts you to make him poor. What are you talking about down there? What's so fucking great about him? Uh, he's tall. <laughs> he's tall! <laughs> you got that right. He's tall. I could care less about Carlton's estate. But for you? Just give me yourself and let the lawyers sort out the rest. It's true, I, I fought with Griffith and he's my rival. But he's not my enemy, as you can see. This is all mighty romantic. But you know that Griffith would fling everything in your face if you offered it to him on those terms. Yeah, if I did. But what if you offered? You would, all the same. You know that Ash Neville song, um, Romeo Blue? Romeo Blue! Yeah. Gee, I know that song! Try him. What's the use? Try him. Great. Great. No, I won't. First you bribe me, and then you tell me to bribe him? Okay, you, there's a guitar here. There's a guitar upstairs. Why don't you go get it? Let's play that song. It's the only way to make two good guys happy. Only I thought that. 
All right, let me hear you play that thing. I, I, I think I, I, got, I got some lyrics that I want to throw out to that song, that Romeo Blue. Trying. He says no? You have nothing to lose. Get thee to a nunnery, or go and get thee hitched. Or get thee to Odeo, because now you're stinking rich. He says yes. Then he'll marry Carlton's estate, and I'll marry my angel. I am, I am almost tempted to try it. No, I can't. It's really way too obnoxious. You're afraid to test him. You're afraid Griffin's love is weak. I don't know what he'd do. Would you just let me feel bad for Griffith from a distance, okay? Something better hit a kiss. Come on over the hill, baby. Put your lips on this. Oh. I'm sorry, that's all I got. Is that my father's song? To obedience. To Greg Neville. And the Neville estate in Montauk. Obedient to such an underrated virtue and so lacking in these degenerate times. Dalton! Dalton, I'm in pain here! <laughs> Thank you. Ah, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Pour that into my hand. Trust me. Trust me. This is good. Do it. Do it. Come on. All of it. Mm. Thank you. How do I look? It's just There you are. You look sick. Are you unhappy? You're not mad at me, are you? I didn't want him to leave me his estate. I wouldn't rob you. Angry? No. He did the right thing. Don't worry. We'll figure something out. I don't love you. But I do sincerely care about you. Don't be sad about today. I'm okay. I did feel brokenhearted. And then I thought we were going to be separated. But now that I'm here with you, I'm as happy as ever. You'll be happy for the moment, and then you'll be in the dumps again. We've got to base your happiness on something stronger than that. Do you know that I can get everything signed back to you? What? But there's a catch. One that'll cause us both a lot of pain. It means that we couldn't see each other for a while. Not until... you could see me married to another man. Don't go! I know I've offended you! I meant well! Don't leave in anger. What I'm about to say is your own fault. You are heartless. What, am I supposed to trade you for two filthy houses and some land? I was just gonna use it to get you. 
Now you tell me to take this stuff and leave my love? Oh, you... I'm sure you don't know what it's like to love somebody. If you did, you'd be ashamed of yourself for what you've done. Love? If you had any idea what it felt like, you couldn't sit there and look at me while you stabbed me in the heart. God forgive you. I sure hope he does. It's not your fault. You were born without a heart. Kate, you're crying. Crying? I could cry my eyes out thinking of how I offended you. I knew you would fling all that money in my face, but they wanted to prove it. Who's they? What difference does it make? It's not me. They? Who is they? You're not going to get jealous again, are you? Let's not harp on them and let's talk about us. You've rejected my suggestion in anger, so let me hear yours. Is there anything that I can do to make you happy? I don't know. Stay single, for my sake. That would be fine, but they're going to make me get married. Tomorrow my priest is going to try to make me marry Neville. You're not going to do it, right? You need a good excuse. Say you don't love him. They won't buy that. <sighs> then I'm done for. No, because I could pretend to love someone else. Though I don't really love you. I like you too well to make you unhappy. I couldn't rob you of everything. I'd rather do anything than that. I'd rather do something kind of stupid, but you wouldn't want me to do that, would you? Talk to me! Are you drunk? Are you sleeping? Oh, Griffith! Why are you making this so difficult? Am I dreaming? Would you marry me after all? How can I say if you don't ask? Will you marry me? I will, if you'll let me. Oh, stop it! You're gonna hurt yourself! What's this? Oh! <laughs> you have to do one thing for me. Would you do one thing for me? Sure. Throw yourself at Father Francis's feet. Really? It's very serious. It's the only way that I think I can pull off doing this ridiculous thing that I'm going to do. He'll smooth it over with my father. Say? Father Francis, it is to you that I owe her. Father Francis, it is to you that I owe her. Father Francis, it is to you that I owe her. You and I are friends for life. There will always be a place for you at our table. There will always be a room for you at my house. What was that scene about? I never thought I'd be unwelcome to him until now. He was hollow. He didn't mean a word of what he said, you know. He's a parrot, a puppet. Spare me? Then stop playing games with me. Be honest or don't talk to me at all. Have pity. Have mercy on him and me. Ah, I see. I know what it's like. I went through a few things before I went into the ministry. The man you couldn't trust will take care of everything for you. Since last night, the double-faced... That little bitch. Griffith's been after her for years. You knew that and put yourself between them. He's poor. She's all he has. I have nothing to say against the man. What use is it fighting with her? None.
honest man leaves without saying a word. What can I do to make Greg feel better? Only time will mend his wounds. Catherine, my daughter, we have a good opportunity to take care of some legal business since the lawyer hasn't left yet. Please. I'm thinking of the interests of the church, and he isn't Catholic. Am I supposed to give him myself and deny him my money? Father Francis is late again. What's wrong? You're not upset because he's leaving. It's okay, you can admit it. I'm, I'm not jealous. I'm not upset at all that he's leaving. Not at all. I've been wanting to say something about this for years. Instead of lifting my soul to heaven, he drags me back to earth. That man's soul has no wings. Once again, I don't see why you're making the exception. All are equal in the eyes of the Lord. All are equal, but some are more useful. But he's a good guy. He doesn't mean any harm. There are plenty of good guys in the world, and a priest. I'd like a little more. I'm thirsty for it. My soul pines for it. He's lovable enough, but no, I am not sorry that he is going. Good to see you, Father Francis. Me too. My daughter, this is Father Leonard. He'll be taking my place. It's so nice to meet you. And you, Miss. <laughs> Are you liking it here? Yes. Is there anything that we can do to help you with your moving? You'd be surprised how much a person like me can accumulate. I may own a thousand books alone. It seems that I save everything. I should have stopped doing that a long time ago. No, I think I can manage. Thanks. I'd like to ask Father Leonard about what he thinks about the state of the church in this country. Do you think it's too late for this to be a Catholic country? Is it too late for a turnaround? Ah, oh, I see I'm going to miss you very much, Father Francis. Why, well, the first time I met you. I was so weird about Father Francis leaving. I thought you hated me. I thought you hated me. Here we go on time. Okay. Good. What did I come in here for? What's in your mind? 
was with that priest last night? Yeah, he's not as easy going as Francis, but that's the way it is. I have to go to confession tomorrow. I always go on Thursdays, and I don't know what to do. You don't have to. That priest was a spiritual machine. He was conceited and, and arrogant. I know, I understand. I hear you. He's not as... You no, know, he's not as fun as Francis was. So what? If you don't like him, stay away. Hello, Father Leonard. It's Catherine. I was wondering, when do you have time? When could I confess? I receive penitence on Thursdays between 2 and 4 o'clock. Oh, so it's first come, first served. Yes, you could put it that way. All right. Bye. Goodbye. The kingdom of heaven is inside you. Jesus said that. I was looking for the kingdom of heaven inside me. I close my eyes and I can feel God at his throne, throbbing in my heart. Does a king always dwell in his kingdom? Not necessarily. Not when there is trouble abroad that demands his attention. Not when the king goes to war. I am concerned that I do not require God's presence in my heart. I have to remember Him. Because if the kingdom of heaven can be in my heart, then what else can be there? We would do better to keep the king at home. To feel God coursing through our veins through our soul. It is the secret to God's love, and it is the only true thing we have to rely on. I have been touched by God. Really? Where did he touch you? It's St. Mary's Church. You think it can't happen there? Our Lord was born in a stable if you think about it. Well, God was touching you a lot longer than I would have liked. I've been waiting a half hour. By the priest's passion. You would have even forgotten about food for once. John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, This is he of whom I said, He who comes after me has a higher rank than I, for he existed before me. For of his fullness we have received, and grace upon grace. Kate. So why didn't you ask Julia to serve you lunch? And eat without you on Sunday? Then dear, we'll just have to ask them to serve lunch later next week. That would upset them, and that would ruin their Sunday. Am I supposed to live for them? Food? Oh Food? Am I supposed to starve my soul to run from my soul? piece of toast? Yuck! I wish I didn't have to eat or drink. It's like falling face down in mud. Food? 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 Well, I'm afraid once again I disgust you. 
I'm gonna go find a place to eat where people don't find me pathetic. Well, go say hi to your friends at the bar for me. Yeah, right. I will. It's so empty in here without all the Father Francis stuff. Does Father Leonard own anything? I would get depressed here. But I suppose angels brighten it for him. Not always. What do you mean? He's just an instrument when he preaches. Are you willing to deceive him for a good cause? I think so. I forgot. I have some clothes that I want to give you. I'll remember it next time, okay? Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye now. Father Leonard. What's wrong with him now? He looks so lonely. Hello. May I speak with the lady of the house? I don't think she's around. Last time I saw her, she was out in the woods. Thank you. This is Father Leonard's folder. I guess I shouldn't look at it. He might get angry. There's nothing to hide. Well, I'm not gonna do it. What's a woman's hair comb doing in his notebook? He was probably with somebody and she left this behind. 
You should be ashamed of yourself. Somebody probably left this behind and he's waiting to find its owner. My husband loved to have this. I think I know what happened. He wanted to draw the Virgin Mary and he needed someone to base it on. That's all. I've got to get going. Well, wait, when are you coming back? I forgot your clothes. Can you come by the house? Yeah. Why don't we try going to a different church tomorrow together? Okay. That church was quite the cure for insomnia. Those that made it through the hymns were goners by the time the minister started. You snored. No, I didn't. You honked like a horn. And you let me? Of course. I would have slept too. But I'm not used to sleeping at that time. You can't sleep while Father Leonard preaches. Are you trying to clean us out? What? Aren't you the maid? You know, if it weren't for you, those clothes and the rest in that bag would be mine. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. And to that, I'd just like to add one more. Blessed are those who do good in secret, for you create more joy than you can possibly imagine. I'm sorry, I, I scared you. I'm going, I just... No, I'm just not used to seeing anyone here. I'm a little skittish sometimes. It's so weird seeing you here of all places. It's not so weird. Melancholy people love such places. I love this place. It's all columns. I just wanted to see it again. So you came to see my trees, and not me. <laughs> Father Francis used to visit all the time, and when he was here, always had someone that I could talk to. Father Francis was friends with my husband as well. I thought, I thought since I'm younger than you that I couldn't be of much counsel. I went straight from Catholic school to seminary to here, so. But you can guide my soul. I can do that. Yeah.
you know? It looks, it's a happy thing. Right. Everyone should have one. Mm -hmm. Hey, Griff. Where's Catherine? What's he doing here? Greg? He's been on the town board since January. So what about Catherine? She's fasting, praying, and looking after the needy these days. Yeah, really. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi. That's all right. <laughs> I'm Griffin. So why don't you just get sick? Maybe she'll check in on you. Oh, she checks in on me, all right. There's certain things she can't give to heaven that she has to give to me. <laughs> I'd rather watch you enjoy what I'm making for you. Okay. So did you have a good time tonight? Who did you see anyone playing with? Uh, just ask Neville's son. I hate that guy. He's so cute though. Whatever. He thinks he's so great. What's he like? That guy is such a jackass. I bet his father bought him that seat on the town board. He just wants to control everybody. Just like that priest. What do you mean? It seems like he's the boss around here these days, Griffith. How so? Well, I think everybody knows that Catherine doesn't do anything without his approval. I mean, he's the one who thinks that your parties are just stupid photo ops. He looks down on them and then suddenly no more parties for Catherine. She just said that she wasn't into him anymore. Why did she suddenly just get tired of them? I put up with a lot because of her religion. I don't know how much more I can take. I would feel exactly the same way if I were you, Griffin. I don't see why you should have to put up with it. Especially when there are other women. I can't believe she fired me. Hey, what's up? I got fired. What for? I don't know. The missus never had any problems with me before. Now she kicks me out like a dog. Where am I supposed to go? This is my home. Oh, you shouldn't be so hard on Catherine. She's the best boss we could ever have. You know it's the priest who got you fired. Griffith, if I tell you the truth, do you promise not to fire me too? Of course I won't fire you. I think I know what the problem is. You know how Julia can sort of read the future? She has these premonitions. Well, she reads tarot cards on the side, and the priest and Catherine were talking about it just the other day. I overheard them. I just do people's charts. I'm a Catholic. Well, the priest told Catherine in no uncertain terms that Julia should be sent away. Oh, Julia, it's the priest who lays down the law in this house. First, Catherine gets rid of Pam because she has her boyfriend sleep over, and now Julia. And for what? Because she has a hobby? Don't cry, Julia. That priest would get rid of Griffith if he had the opportunity. And what would happen to us? <sighs> Thanks, Carolyn. I never knew you were such a great girl. Listen, Julia, there are dogs that bark and dogs that bite. And Griffith is just as likely to be tossed out of here as you are. So now Julia's getting kicked out too? She'll be here until the end of the month. Then Mary Single comes back. Mary Single? is white trash. You can't even cook a TV dinner. But then again, she does go to your church, doesn't she? Let me worry about the health. Okay, I can handle it. By all means, but this isn't you. This is Leonard. Is a young bachelor the right person to run a man's family? 
bachelor? Who would think to call a priest that? That man is a saint. Not married, so he's a bachelor. Again, I repeat, it's atrocious for a young bachelor to come between husband and wife. To hear all your secrets, to have his fingerprints all over everything. He's setting himself up to run my house, to order my wife to fire my employees. Hey, wh hey why not kick me out too? As far as your priest is concerned, I'm no good either. You are in a temper, and I'm starting to think that you want to get me in one too. Yeah, well, maybe so. My temper's been under serious assault these last few months. It was bad enough when you just confessed to him. You tell him everything. You don't tell me anything. He knows your heart better than I do. That is harsh for me. But, but now, now he runs your life. You're not the same person. You blow off my friends. You won't go out with me. This house is dead. So dead that I have to go to Buckley's for a smile or a friendly word. You have changed. You did not used to get between me and the cook. Are you sure some scheming woman isn't advising you? We have to calm down. We're both combative people. I will think about it. And I will try to come up with something that will satisfy you. You mean, ask your priest, don't you? You mean, what am I? Am I an ornament to you? Am I... Can you not show me the slightest shred of respect in my own house? Huh? No, Kate, no. No man who respects himself and his dear wife would ever let a man come between them. Listen, I'm telling you this right now. If you kick that poor woman out just to please that damn priest, I will kick his ass just to please her and her family. They're definitely as good as he is. As good as he is? The cook who thinks she's a psychic? You'll make me hate her! Then I say, that priest will never darken my doors again. Then I say, they are my doors and not your doors. And he shall brighten them whenever he will. You still here? What's wrong with you? There's a man coming between my wife and I, and I don't know what to do about it. We should rough him up. You can't take that. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how. I can't just call him out and fight him like a real man. Why not? He's a priest. I thought priests were just in the little boys. It's not sex, stupid. He's telling my wife what to do. That's their job. Are you going to help me or not? Yes, my daughter. I really should minister to you in person. That would be for the best. I can come over soon. All right. Griffith? I'm to blame. I wasn't kind. I did not mean what I said. That wasn't me. You don't have to say that. I don't have a problem with you. And I never will. You're just doing what you're told. What you said hurt. But the man who made you say it, that's the one I'm going to get revenge against. Griffith, don't be like that. That holy man would be the first to correct me. Thank you, and I love you dearly for not seeing my faults. Father Leonard will chastise me. Until that creep came along, you have never said a nasty word to me. 
We were the happiest couple around. What's it going to be like a year or two from now? Oh, I'll have my revenge. That man has given me many miserable days over the last few months. I'm just going to give him one. You're going to see it happen. You are a maniac. I waste my excuses on jealousy, on insanity. I will stop talking, so I will stop offending you. But you will see that I am offended now. Very deeply offended. That you'll see. Then you'll pay for that too. Dare lay a hand on a priest in my house. You know how men are. They probably just egged each other on. Listen, I'm the last person who wants to tell on my fellow employees, but the truth is that they plan to rough him up and throw him in the lake. Tell Griffith to come here at once. You know, I don't think I'd do that if I were you. The truth is that these guys would only do something if Griffith had expressly told them what to do. You can't be serious. Griffith has guts, and something like this would only occur to a filthy animal. I don't know what to do. What do you think I should do? Well, why don't you just call Father Leonard and tell him not to come around here for the next few days, just until the storm dies. He's on his way here! No one. Here. I want you to take this letter to him. Take my car and bring it to him. Right away. Now get going! This is it? Bitch, probably knew I'd look. I scared you, I'm sorry. Certainly did. Um, you're here to see Catherine? Yes. Okay. Uh, she's, she's in the grove. I'll leave you there. Go ahead. Thank you. Father Leonard, there's something very important I have to tell you. There is a terrible plot to hurt you. Don't worry, I won't let them lay a finger on you, but you have to do what I say. The best thing for us to do is get you out of here right now. If you follow this trail, it'll lead directly back to your house. Father, just leave your car here and we'll take care of that later. How can I thank you? How can I possibly express my gratitude to you? Father, religion is religion. It would be a terrible sin for anyone to offend you. But please forgive them. They haven't hurt you, and Catherine would hate them for it, but she'll love you all the more. Besides, if you can't come see her, I'm sure that she can come to see you. You think so? Oh, I'm sure of it. We women always follow our hearts. Oh, Father, I'm sorry. I'm supposed to give this to you. That's from Catherine. Oh, Father, don't let it get you down. She'll be just fine by the time she comes to see you. I promise. I'm causing problems in your house. And that's not right. Perhaps it would be better if I left. Rather than disturb what God has brought together. Father, why should you be responsible for the problems between a couple? Is that your fault? Catherine is married to a man that she doesn't love. And Griffith is jealous of you for no reason. You've done nothing wrong. If I were a man, I wouldn't let him accuse me for nothing. If I were you, I wouldn't let him threaten me and throw me in a lake. Father, if I were you, I would take the sweet as well as the bitter. All right, stop. Just 
Stop. I'm sorry, I offended you. No, no, you haven't offended me. It's just you shouldn't speak that way. It offends the immortal soul. God loves you and forgives you. Say one Our Father and one Hail Mary. Thank you. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. Catherine. Dear Father, have you missed me? Think then, then, how I've missed you. Don't let their insolence silence you. Let me confess, and then you can tell me what to do. If only I had your patience to carry it out. My temper is to blame for everything, mea culpa. Tell me everything, my child. I was reading when Griffith came to speak to me. Oh. What is it? Did I say something wrong? I can't stand this anymore. I have been living in this state of barren desolation. Before I met you, I was happy. I had only God's love, I had a divine calling, and now, without you, I... Catherine, I can't eat, I can't sleep, I can't teach! Lord, help me! I've committed idolatry. Catherine. Catherine, I love you. I love you more than God. Catherine! Catherine, wait! Catherine, wait! Catherine! Forgive me. I pity you! You? Jealous of my husband? Pray to Christ to cure you of your blindness! to ask you a favor. You said that we should take a trip. Why don't we take a trip today? I need a change. That'll take cash. I've got $10,000 in cash. Uh, we could use credit cards for the rest. This is really weird. It's all of a sudden. I just want to get far away from the place where we've grown so cold to each other. But I have the Hampton Classic. I've been practicing. We have six horses signed up. 
today. After the classic, then I'm your man. I'll take you anywhere you want to go. London, Paris, Rome, you name it. Today or tomorrow at the latest. Or you don't love me the way that you should. Kate, be reasonable. After the classic, then we go. Your horses. Your horses before me? You don't love me. Griffith! Griffith! What? What's going on? Something terrible's happened. Catherine just fell down the stairs. What? Catherine! I strained my back. Somebody call a doctor! I feel awful. Just hold still. Everything's gonna be fine. Don't move around, okay? Yeah, that was one. Get the hand pulled. Get the hand pulled. Griffith! Hey. You're looking happy. It's a gorgeous day. I was just watching you ride out there. You're amazing on those horses. I'm all right. Yeah, really, you're wonderful. So how's Catherine doing in the house? Same, I guess. I mean, just going to take a lot of bed rest for her to get any better, right? I wish there was something I could do to fix her. She doesn't seem to want to talk. Yeah, well, I guess it's good that she isn't the only person in the world, right? Otherwise, things could be unbearably lonely for you. What's wrong with you? Come on, it can't be that bad. Griffith, it's me, all right? I just can't stand to see you wasting your feelings on her. She's not as sick as you think. Are you insinuating that my wife is pretending? How could I say that, Griffith? I wasn't there when it happened. I didn't see her fall. In fact, no one saw her fall. No one even heard it, and the house was full of people. I have no doubt that there's something wrong with Catherine, believe me. But. I think she has more trouble with her heart than with her back. What's troubling her heart? Tell me. I'll fix it. God, Griffith. Why don't you just give Father Leonard a call? Then she'll get up and walk around and smile at you like she used to. What do you mean? He hasn't been around for a month. That's just it. Don't you see that, Griffith? You threatened the priest, and he's too smart to come back here again. And now Catherine's bitter against you for chasing him away. That priest. Is it possible? My wife? It's a lie. Take back what you said. If this can't be real, because if, if, if this is what's going on, there's going to be murder in this house. Griffith, stop it. No woman is worth that. Listen, Catherine has a good heart. You can believe that. But you need to realize that you only have one true friend in this house. And that's me. Well, at least you seem to care a little for me. Well, then don't believe a word against Catherine. Just wait until you have more information. Just relax and watch her quietly. Listen, you can't confront her directly. Otherwise, she'll be on her guard. I promise I'll help you, Griffith, but you've got to be a man and learn the truth. She will be vindicated. Right. Well, don't talk to me too much in front of her. Otherwise, she'll know something's up. When I know something, I'll signal you and we'll meet out in the grove. Nobody goes there anymore. We should have privacy there.
what are you doing up here? I just wish I could find some proof of her guilt or proof of her innocence. It takes time. This is ruining my life. I'm, I'm physically sick. I'm getting sick. I'm just getting to the point where I wish I was dead. I'm feeling like my heart could just fall out on the floor any second now. All of this over a woman who's not even that young or that good looking? Griffith, I can help you with your doubt. When you were going to attack the priest the other day, I had an opportunity to speak with him. When you threatened him, he became your enemy. But Griffith, what revenge is sweeter than the one that comes naturally? Could a wife and a priest ever be together? What would keep them apart? Could they be together legally? Could Betsy keep them apart? I don't think so. So there you have three enemies. Love, revenge, and opportunity. I mean, what did the priest say to me standing not ten feet from here? If I'm to have the bitter, I'll have the sweet as well. <gasps> Griffith! Griffith, I'm sorry, I won't say another word. Sometimes it's better to be blind. God, how you cling to a woman who pretends to be sick just to stay away from you. When there are others, others who adore every hair on your head, who would follow you around the world for just one kind look. I sure hope nobody loves me like that. To love that way is to be miserable. And pity her at least. <sighs> Poor Carolyn. I, I, I see what you're getting at. And God damn it. Damn her! I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use you just to get back at her. What can I do for you? How's your jumping been going? I've been told about you. What's in your pockets, huh? Don't think I'm a fool. Where did you leave Catherine? In her bedroom. Well, she isn't there now. That is it! Griffith! Griffith! Griffith, are you crazy? Do you want to be put away for them? Do you want to break my heart? The only woman who's ever loved you? Griffith, if you don't stop this madness... Give me the gun, Griffith. I'm not going to tell you anything if you don't give me that gun. Tell me what? Well, today I pretended I was going to go out, but instead I went and waited back in my room, and I saw Catherine. She went outside about 30 minutes after everyone else left. Why didn't you call me? Because they hadn't done anything. I mean, nothing happened yet. What? I saw her go out into the grove, and she looked like she was waiting or praying or something. And then, guess who pulls into the driveway? Yeah, that damn priest! Yeah, so I sneak out there to see if I can overhear something. And 
Catherine's out there just walking up and down with all this energy like she was never sick. Give me the gun, Griffith. So I heard her say, you promised this very night. And then she gave him some money. Griffith. Where's the priest? He's out. Where? I don't know. Fuck you. Did you go to the beach? Who told you that? I saw some sand. Yeah, I went to the beach. Alone? Uh-huh. I have some good news. What? Father Leonard's going to be leaving. What do you mean? I saw how unhappy you are. So I helped get him a job in Ireland. He's going to be a teacher. He's leaving tonight. Beyond a reasonable doubt? I'm not even sure I did it. Catherine's joined some Sisters of Fiery Mercy or something. She comes sometimes. I'll be out of here. 
The guards, they love me. I'll be out of here. Good behavior. I'll be out of here, and I'll get Catherine back. I can talk her into anything. <laughs>